When I play the GK, mostly I'm thinking about how I would rather play any other ship at the tier. Literally, pick another ship, I'll play that. Usually, that's a good indicator for me about how good or bad a ship is. And from my personal battleship stats, which are terrible, look away. At legendary tier, GK is in fact one of my worst performing ships with the lowest average damage and the lowest average XP. But am I wrong? Is this ship actually good? And do the data sheets of Wargaming have other things to say about the Grosser Curve first? This video will break it down for you. The long and the short of it, GK is the biggest ship in the game and it's bristling with guns. It's heavily armored and tanky in theory, has sonar, and really would be labeled a secondary or brawling battleship, I would say. The secondaries, they reach seven kilometers stock, a pretty good range, and there are plenty of them. Oh, and they have a decent ability to deal damage because of their high pin rates. Unlike other nations, such as the Americans and the Ohio, yes, Ohio has the same secondary range, but penetration is a different story. It's much, much less. For a long time now, the community has claimed GK is falling behind its peers and has been power crept and made obsolete by some of these other newer battleships. Ohio and Colombo would be the ones that come to mind first off. Now, there is something to this, I think. But first, I wanted to explain this video. You guys picked the grocer curve first. It had the most votes for the ship you wanted to see reviewed. So in the comment section down below, vote on the next ship you would like to see. Now about that power creep, I would start with GK's health pool. For the longest time, it has been the biggest HP pool in the game. It was GK's bragging right. Hey, I have this massive amount of HP to throw around, although I do swear 94,000 of it is here in the superstructure. But Ohio joined the fray recently and actually has a bigger HP pool. What gives? Why should Ohio enter the game with better AP? Better accuracy, better firing angles, better AA, better maneuverability, better torque production, better heals, and the same concealment. It doesn't really seem fair, and yeah, I would say that. It really doesn't seem fair. One part of this we could dissect is the fact that Ohio got her PC HP pool, while most of our legendary tier battleships get a nerfed Legends version of it. See, Montana on PC actually has 96,300 health. All of our legendary battleships really have taken an HP hit except Ohio. So should GK get her beefed up 105,000 HP she has on PC? Personally, I think so, but let's keep going. The point being here, GK is no longer the king of health, and if you add in the heals, things start to look worse for her. The effective health of Colombo and Ohio are very high, even better than the Conqueror now. The armor is supposed to be the high point of GK. She should be very tanky. 50 millimeters of deck armor, icebreaker, turtle back. But the big weaknesses of the ship are worst in class torpedo reduction and that superstructure, of which I wanted to test out once and for all. I have put plenty of time into German battleships, Bismarck being one of my most played ships. Why? I don't know, I love pain. Turpets, GK, I've played them quite a bit and they can just get slapped around from the HP and their superstructure. It's always a massive, massive disappointment. What is the point of angling when their superstructure can get chunked for 15 to 20,000 damage? Even when they become oversaturated, you can still get massive chunk damage off of the grosser curve first. The deck armor, the thick upper belt, the thick bow armor. Sometimes I wonder, does it really matter? <laughs> I'll let you guys decide that. Now, to help out a little bit, Grosser Kerferus does get a very strong sonar. It reaches six kilometers, and that's great. However, it only lasts 60 seconds, not a very long time. So if you're making a push, there's a good chance the sonar is going to run out. The guns, really, they're not that bad on paper. You have a high salvo weight still. After all these years, it's one of the best. You throw these 12 shells down range, and you can deal 152,400 theoretical damage. It's just behind the Montana and the Conqueror. Oh, and now the Colombo with her 16 gun. And the accuracy. It should be okay with a 1.85 Sigma, although the dispersion is a little annoying, I have to say. It's German, and on many occasions, if you're rocking a full secondary build, you're going to say, WTF Hans, what are you aiming at, buddy? And you're just going to splash your opponents on all sides. But really, the problems begin with the firing angles. They are very, very, very bad. They're like Marlboro levels. You're just not going to be able to safely fire all of your guns at once. 
most of the time you'll be stuck just using the front guns if you're pushing or the rear guns if you're kiting and it's made worse by a massive turning circle and a bad rudder shift but let's not get ahead of ourselves the big heavy broadside it's cool it's just not very often that you can safely use it Conqueror, I would say, kind of struggles with the same problem in ways, except she's more maneuverable and has better concealment so she can reposition. Grocer Kerfurst has the worst concealment in the entire game, 16.1 kilometers stock. You will likely never go unspotted unless you're just at the back of the map, which is really not how to play this ship. It makes it very difficult to reposition, to turn out, or to get good map position without getting focused. It is a huge, huge problem for this ship, and also, I can vent just a little bit. Being a CC with a recognizable name in the biggest ship in the game with the worst concealment in the game is a complete nightmare, I have to say. Just had to get that off my chest. Special thanks for all of you this week that pummeled me into dust over and over again. I appreciate it. May I have another? <laughs> I'm mostly kidding, but really, the concealment is terrible and you're going to have a hard time. You're not going to be sneaking around anywhere. Put all of that together and it's hard to get these big, beautiful guns on target. It's very much a struggle. That turning circle, it's 1,050 meters. It's the second largest turning circle in the entire game, I believe, so far, behind Stalingrad. And even though you can reach 30 knots in the straights and top speed, which is pretty decent, the massive size of this ship, the turning circle, and the almost 20 second rudder shift time means that you can't really turn and bring your guns into and out of the fight. So it's really not an option. You kind of just have to stay slightly angled and just use two of your turns. The secondaries, I feel like they should be more impressive than they are, but after playing ships like Lepanto, Schlieffen, Prince Ruprecht, and others, they just don't feel that great anymore. The DPM is kind of lackluster, and the lack of 150mm guns is an easy thing to point out. If we compare Schlieffen and the GK secondary batteries, Schlieffen is just miles and miles better. Now the saving grace of GK is that the larger 128mm guns actually pin a good amount of armor. 32mm is a strong threshold to pin, of course we know that is a very, very common armor threshold at legendary tier for cruisers and for bows and sterns of battleships. They do have a shorter range and are less accurate than Schlieffen, but at least they pin more armor than the 105s. It's still a solid build choice on GK, I would say, going into the secondaries. After playing some other ships, though, I'm just here to say it's definitely less exciting and effective feeling on GK than it used to feel. On to the AA. GK is the worst out of all the LT battleships. Now, carriers are not very prevalent at LT yet. That's great. But if they're around, you're not going to have a lot of fun in GK, and we'll just leave it at that. So with all of the problems of this ship, I tried to fix some of them with my build. I tested a hybrid build to start, because really these 12 guns should be powerful, and this is a decent mid-range gun platform. But really, the best games I had were, in fact, full secondary games and waiting for the right time to push up and deal damage with the guns and secondaries together. Those were the best performances I had. The Celiax build netted me my best games with a good blend of secondary power and tankiness. Fight Fire with Fire is great, I would recommend it of course, but I also really enjoyed running with scissors. The extra rudder shift time and the gun damage up close is pretty powerful. I used the Justinian Lion's Fire build for most of my games, but if you're looking for different inspirations, I would recommend Kondo. That's a solid choice to try and cut down the concealment a little bit. I think on my build, I got it down to 13.2 kilometers. If you're a German BB main, I am curious what kind of build you would go with. So let me know in the comment section down below. Now, from my communication with our overlords on paper and the spreadsheets, they say GK is doing just fine. It is not underperforming. So I just kind of have to rack my brain and figure out why that is. Because for my games, it is massively underperforming. And maybe that's just me as a player. I just don't get how to use the ship properly. Hey, that's very, very possible. I do have a 77% win rate on this ship out of about 40 or 50 battles. And the only thing that can draw me to a conclusion here is possibly the attractive damage this thing takes and the attention it draws. Maybe these GK pushes take so much effort and attention from the opposing team 
that it opens up the rest of the map and your team to make plays? I don't know. Maybe it's the well-timed sonar rushes to crush enemy destroyers. I'm not sure. What I do know is that in terms of damage, this was my worst battleship, being some 26,000 average damage behind Burgonia. A massive discrepancy and much less XP as well, although we know this really isn't a reliable metric because secondary hits and secondary damage receive a big nerf in the amount of XP that you gain. So I wouldn't really look at that. Also, I would love to hear from you guys. Thoughts on the GK? Do you think she's underperforming? Do you think she's in a good place? Am I just a terrible grocer Kerfirst captain? Because really, that wouldn't surprise me. So let me know in the comments section down below. All I know is if I had to win a game in a legendary tier battleship to save my life, grocer Kerfirst or Montana would be my last picks. Conqueror or the Burgonia would be the ships that I take out to lay some pipe on the Reds. If you're curious about another forgotten and underperforming ship, the last you pick ship was a Tago, so check out that recent video. Don't forget to vote on the next ship you want to see. Like sub, this is Durka signing off. See ya.